Hey y'all, Courtney Lyons here with Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend and today I have a really awesome tutorial for you and that is learning how to multi-place with rounds. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, as a quick intro here, rounds versus square diamonds. Let me show you the difference. Um, it's, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, but I'm still gonna show you the difference. So round diamonds are the ones, or drills, are the ones that are round. And they are larger than the square diamonds, which I will show you right here. But, so they actually take less time to do, for the most part, they take less time to do than squares do. It still depends on like, confetti level. If you get like a really high color blocking, meaning there's a lot of the same color in one spot, square and you compare it to a high confetti round, confet high, uh, confetti meaning a lot of color changes, this would be more of a higher confetti. There's a lot of color changes. Here's a square. So you can see the difference. Also the difference is squares when you put them together, they go right next to each other because they're square, so they can. Rounds, as you can see in a lot of the places here, have gapping. So there's always like a little bit of glue that is exposed in rounds. So just so you know that. Another big difference is squares are a lot easier to multi-place with. Now, what do I mean by multi-placing? Multi-placing is very dependent on the tools. So. Here's a single placer on this side, meaning you can usually only pick up one diamond at a time. Every once in a while, I can pick up two at a time if I have really sticky glue or if it spills over the edge, not glue, sorry, putty or wax. And then on the other side, you can see here, I have a multi-placer. This is a seven placer or maybe an eight placer. I think it's an eight placer. This is an eight placer, which means I can pick up eight, usually about nine. If it's squares, I can pick about about nine. Rounds, I can pick up about eight because um, the rounds are bigger than the squares. But seeing as when you use this, you can pick up eight, means you can place eight at the same time. Because squares fit together so well, when you pick them up with the multiplacer, they actually go down the same way you pick them up because there's not supposed to be gapping between squares if you're getting a good kit. Although, but the thing is with rounds it doesn't work the same way so it's a little bit harder to multi-place actually some people won't even do rounds because they can't multi-place some people will single place rounds and some people just kind of deal with it uh, so they can get kind of both sides but i like i, I just want to show you guys some tips and tricks i have five different tips to show you how to multi-place more easily with rounds to make it more enjoyable so you're not constantly having a crooked crooked rounds now i do want to point out that these are the tips and tricks that i use and not only the tips tips and tricks that are available out there because other people might use different things like i know some people will use i'll try to pop up a picture if i can remember some people will use like a grid thing and to help them place. So it's actually a thing, it's like a metal or aluminum thing that you put, I mean aluminum's metal, but I mean aluminum type metal that you can stick on here and pull back off. And you actually put the whole thing down and it covers some of the round spots and it leaves some open so that you can open them. So you mostly have to single place. So, um, but it is a good trick to use to keep things straight. Um, there are also straighteners that have lines on them, so you can still multi-place, but it straightens them out better. Uh, all those are great. I have not tried any of them, nor do I really have like a desire to try those. I probably will eventually just for the sake of you guys and to have the content on my channel. And who knows, maybe I'll end up loving it. But as of now, that's not what this one is about. This is using simply a multi-placer, a tray, and your drills and canvas and how to multi-place with rounds. So let's go ahead and get into that. Let's start with tip number one. Tip number one, a softer putty. So you'll see why in a little bit on tip number four, 
why I use a softer putty. It's called the Inchworm. We'll get to it in a little bit. I'll explain it better. But I do want to explain that for me personally, multi-placing with rounds usually works best with a softer putty. And by softer putty, let me kind of open it up and show you because I've got like two extremes right here. I've got this jasmine scented putty from, I think this is Creations Morin. Um, Creations Morin, I think is how you say it. And then I have right here, Randa's Crafty Corner, which is a very hard putty. They're very, very different from each other. And then right here, I have Patsy Putty, which is about in the middle. Like it really is a good middle ground if you want to be able to, if you don't like too soft a putty. Um, I'm a putty, like use it as, until it's gone kind of putty person. <laughs> and I do want to point out that I haven't used a whole lot of different putties. The other ones that I have used from another company is uh, Kat's Diamond Painting. Um, she is actually a creator on YouTube as well. And hers is probably my favorite putty that I've ever tried. But I just don't have it and it's hard to get. And I have some putty already here that I can use. So I will use these up before I probably get too much more. But I did really want to try this because it works really well with ABs, just a side note. So the reason I say a softer putty, although I keep this on hand for the, the ABs because this is a hard press putty and you can pick ABs up without losing the cover on the top, like the coating that makes it an AB. AB, for those of you who might know, is something like this where it has a special coating and so it just looks especially shiny, but it, it is very easy to get off if you're using a softer putty. The harder putty does help with that. So, but the softer putty makes it so the drills, and I won't, I'll get into it later, this technique with the inchworm, but having that, having to do with, the inchworm has to do with the drills being able to be moved around once they're on the multi-placer. So once I get them on the multi-placer and I go to place it down, I want to be able to wiggle dr the drills around a little bit. With a harder putty, it just kind of gets in there and it doesn't really move because the putty itself doesn't stretch. Unless you hold really lightly, then you can still work it. Like if you're pressing, if you're a really light presser, you can probably get away with most putties with this, but a softer putty. The thing is sometimes this putty is so soft, I still love it. It works really well, it's very satisfying, makes a really good click. Um, it's so soft, you really have to be a soft presser with this for sure. And then also it, it will sometimes, uh, it just loses its elasticity after a while or it gets it gets stringy I suppose is what you could say whereas that starts to just like this one right here just gets harder and harder and harder until it feels like it's like these are so opposite the um this is the creations more in and this is the Randa's craft corner um but they're so opposite because this gets softer and stringier until you can't it's too soft and stringy this gets harder until it's too hard so it's really interesting the difference so just so you know um, those two are very different ones. I love having these in tandem with each other. This, I would say, is still a little bit too soft for me. Um, I am not, uh, let me see, my hard presser. I really wouldn't call myself a hard presser. I just don't really like when things get stringy because then it get, it starts to leave pieces of the putty on the canvas. And I do feel like this gets stringy faster, but it is a very good putty. It's very satisfying and it's very much just up to your preference so like I said I don't have I have not tried a lot of putties but I've tried varied types of putties I guess diamond art club would be a little bit on the softer side because diamond art club if you get a diamond art club does come with its own putty I would say it's closer to this where it does get softer and softer and gets a little bit stringy after a little while they have improved the formula but I would still say it's a softer tendency towards stringy but would work really well with multi-placing because it's a softer one. So that is tip number one. Let's move on to tip number two. All right, tip number two is choosing a diamond painting that has a, di a tighter drill field. Now the drill field is, you see how these are all individual pixelated squares. Some of those, are a little bit bigger than the drills are in size. 
And what I mean by that is that means it actually causes a little bit of gapping. And the same thing can happen with squares. It's a lot more noticeable with squares and a lot more frustrating with squares. Whereas with rounds, you can deal with some gapping, but it does make for some very difficult multiplacing. And the reason it makes it difficult is that when you are when you have it on your multiplacer and you put it down, you're getting on right here. In fact, let's pull this out and look and see what I'm talking about. Maybe that might not have been the best color. Maybe a darker color would have been better. So you see right here, I have my lines. I'm going to get my multiplacer. The gaps between the rounds, you can see, are not very big. So if you don't have very much gapping between the rounds on your multiplacer, then you go to put it on the grid, and the grid is spaced more and I've had this with a budget kit happen recently, actually. So you can come over here and say, let's see, what color is this? What's that? Oh, do I not even have that color? That would be funny. I don't even have this color on here. One second. And I, or at least I don't see it right off the bat. Let's take these J's out. Come over here and get this one. This is the J. So right here I have four, so I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna utilize my other tips, you'll see in a second. And I'm gonna come down here and place them. Now you can see here how closely those are together because this is a very tight grid. And granted, it's still round, so it's still harder to multiplace, but because this, and by the way, this one is MuniMade, so I very highly recommend rounds at MuniMade, very, very highly. Um, Diamond Art Club as well, although I, do, I will say Diamond Art Club is a little bit of a looser grid. It can be a little bit harder in comparison to this MuniMade to multiplace, but like minimally. It really is still really good and nothing like the budget kits where they are too hard to multi-place or you have to do a lot of corrections after the point. I will also say one that has stood out to me as having a very tight round grid would be Distracted by Diamonds has a very, there. I had a lot of issues with my Distracted by Diamonds kit, but one of the things I thought they did amazing was the tight grid, grid, grid mm -hmm. I always do this, tight grid or tight drill field they did a really good job with so let me show you like if let's pretend these are too spaced out this is what ends up happening i'm just going to make them really tight um is that let's pretend like those are not that tight but let's pretend like the drill field is too loose so that when you put things down you're starting to get gapping at the end of that multi-placing row because there's too much space in between the drills whereas if you were to actually multiplace this normally, it would have come down pretty well. Um, keep in mind, the more drills you multiplace, the more you're going to have to correct with any rounds, no matter how tight the grid, it just, it just works that way because they don't fit together like squares do. So I would also, this is a side note, I do not actually have this on here, but I would say start small on the amount that you're putting on and then go a little bit bigger and bigger until you get to the point where it's like too big and like I can't go anything more than this. I've tried a 12 placer on rounds and I just, I can't. No matter putting all this together, I'm sure someone else has a tip that will work, but doing all these tips together, I cannot get more than uh, an eight placer right here without it just not being straight anymore. Okay, so that is, look how cute that bunny is. Guys, I'm loving this kit. That is tip number three, or two, having a tighter grid is really important. And um, side note, if you want a tighter grid, go to the good companies, the licensed diamond painting companies that have good high quality stuff. If you wanna see what some of those are, myself as well as a lot of other YouTubes YouTube content creators have done a lot of reviews on the different companies. So go check that out. Do a little bit of um, studying on your own to go and find out which company to go and buy expensive kits from. So you want to get the right stuff. So, and they will tell you if it's a tight grid or not. Okay, let's move on to tip number three. Tip number three, I do want to use a very opposite color of the tray. 
Ooh, this orange is perfect. Um, let me see. I'm going to get the darker. No, this orange is perfect. Okay. So here's your tray, right? This is a Muni Made tray. I love this tray. I think this one and the, what was the other one? The Yellow Dog Designs tray are my favorite trays that I've tried. But yeah, so you can see here at the lines. If you push all the way this way, do you see the way these rounds buckle together? And that's super common with rounds. With squares, not so much because the flat ends are right up against each other. And so you don't see that with the squares as much. They don't really buckle as much. But with this one, they do. With rounds, they do. You can see the lines are not quite there. So this trick is so fast and easy to get the hang of because all of these tricks, you kind of, uh, especially these last three, you kind of have to get good at. But this one's the easiest because the next thing you do once you've made your lines is you flatten the tray, level the tray, and then you kind of shake it again to loosen those lines. Loosen the lines and maybe even start turning it this direction down to go the opposite way. And let me show you what that looks like with the tray sideways. Okay, obviously it's not going to stay that way, but so we go this way to make our lines. Then we slowly start doing this to loosen the lines. Okay, now do you see that? They're not buckling as much anymore. And that's going to make it so much better because let me show you the difference. We're going to pick up, we're gonna make our lines like this, which a lot of people do. They just make it all the way like that. And then now we're gonna pick up multi-placing like this. And you're gonna see the way they are together. They are not straight, they are crooked because of their rounded edges. They push against each other when pushed against like that on the tray and they don't make it straight. But when you do loosening, Let's pick it up again. So much straighter. I don't know if that's focusing or not. It kinda doesn't look like it is, but you get the idea. You can still see it, how much straighter it is. So that one is a really fast tip to do that makes it way easier to get straight lines right off the bat before you even place so you don't have to worry so much about correcting. Okay. That is one of the faster tips. Let's, that is the fastest tip probably. Let's move on to tip number four. Okay, tip number four. Uh, this is the one that I call the inchworm. <laughs> and so when we get our tray, we loosen up the drills just a bit, not too much. You don't want them gapping. And then you take Although it depends on the grid. If it's a really loose grid, then you might wanna give a little bit more space between those drills when you loosen. And um, But this one I usually just loosen a little bit because it is very tight. So I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna pick up my drills. But as I pick up my drills, I'm going to kind of, it's very subtle, you kind of stretch them. So let me show that again. So I'm gonna come back over here to my tray. And as I, I'm gonna start on one side here. I'll try to bring it a little closer. And I kind of stretch and loosen as I go. You get better at this so that you can see right there. They're a little bit further apart from each other. And then that's part one. So after you loosen, and then part one is kind of stretching them out a little bit as you pick them up. And then as you put them down, do the same thing. So, oops. <laughs> This isn't the right one, There's, that's a different drill, but we're gonna pretend. So I put down one corner first. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. So you can see I put down one corner and then I stretch by pushing the opposite direction. Can you see it stretching? So instead of just putting down right there, I'm gonna stretch just a touch till the opposite side looks like the end drill right there. It looks like it's gonna go down straight and I put it down. Okay, sorry, I know that did not show up as straight because it is very difficult to place drills with the camera where it is because I'm looking off at the side so just a heads up that's why like these work really well it's what I've been using but if I'm a little bit clumsy at it that's why um you can see right now I'm using Patsy Putty so it is it's that that blue one so it's a little softer it is easier to stretch with this jasmine putty like I said in tip one so just a heads up so I'm going to come back over here my grid is loose I'm going to come 
Let's see, I have a five placer right there. So I'm going to come pick up five of them. I'm going to stretch it out a little bit. Oh, a little bit too much. Try that again. I'm going to stretch it out a bit. And that just makes it so it's easier once it's down. And then I'm going to come up here, put this one down, stretch again. And kind of, you stretch back and forth. See how I'm stretching back and forth? Depending on where I am. Ah, uh, that last drill right there. Good. Okay, like I said, <laughs> it's the camera angle. It works really well. I'm just at such a weird angle for my face that it looks like it's going down in the right spot. And then um, I'm just not looking at it directly. Okay, so loosen. Let's try one more time. Uh, looks like another, this one's five again. So I'm going to stretch a little bit, and this is the inchworm because you, you know, inchworm starts fat and short and then gets longer and thinner, but obviously this just gets longer. <laughs> All right, I'll put this down, stretch a little bit. Perfect. Okay, getting the hang of this angle. <laughs> and let's do one that's bigger. Let's see, where do we have this color right here? Okay, right here is a good spot, right there. And I'm not, let's see, that's definitely going to be the whole thing. So here I'm going to loosen a bit. I'm going to stretch inchworm as I put down. I got like nine of them there. Here, oh yeah, that's how many we need. So here I put my first drill down at an angle. Hold on, it's not. There we go. First drill down at an angle. Oh no, I just got too many. That's okay. Um, and then I see, can you see the way it's stretching? inchworm in, inchworm out, and I'm going to inchworm all the way up to that last drill, which is not placed correct. Okay, like I said, angle. <laughs> Obviously, you're looking at it at the correct angle, so you'll place it down well to begin with. I feel like this is a bad example, but it's really the angle. Like, it works so well. There you go. Okay, um, I'm just, for the sake of my own sanity, going to try it again. Yeah, okay, so I'm a very behind and to the right of the canvas, so I'm not looking straight up, so I think it's going down straight <laughs> because I'm not seeing the tops of the drills very easily. So anyway, that's why. Um, but yeah, it, it works really, really well to make sure you don't have to correct quite as much. So here we are right here. Here's a number five, one, stretch, place, perfect. I maybe will correct a little bit here or there. But that brings us to my last tip. So let's move on to the last tip. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Okay, I'll, actually at the very end, I'll just kind of conclusion for you. So we have now our tips, but no matter how well you do, they are still rounds and they do not do well multi-placing as well, I should say, as squares. So you still adjust. And that's the last tip. Like take time to, once you put something down, come over here and straighten just a bit. Because it makes a difference to just kind of go back and straighten. And that is with any diamond painting squares or rounds, no matter how many tips I use. You go in there and you just give them a little bit of nudge here or there. See how I kind of, especially since you get going quickly sometimes, and you straighten. That one even needs straighten a little bit, see? And that's what I do. It is a really, really good way to keep things just looking nice and if, if you want to keep things straight because it's just really hard to straighten with rounds. They don't click together very well. So... Um, I don't worry about things being placed down uh, very tight. So that might need to be another tr uh, tip is don't don't stress about it being super straight because with rounds it'll drive you crazy to try to keep them straight. It just isn't it just isn't possible to stay super straight. But um, they do work up quickly and they you also don't have to um, worry about them being outside of their lines as much as you would with squares, because if you do that too much, then you're gonna start getting popping. <laughs> Whereas with rounds, you don't have that issue. So that's the upside of rounds. But yes, that was the last tip was straighten everything. As soon as you multi-place down, straighten it up, then move on to the next one. It will save you so much straightening later on. It's worth the time. Okay, so I am going to zoom out again really fast and give you a quick recap.
recap. Number one, use a softer putty, and that's so you can use the inchworm later, right? Um, number two, make sure that you have a high quality canvas that has a tight grid, like a tight grid of drill field. Number three, loosening the lines in the tray. So that's where you make your line and then you kind of shake it the opposite way to loosen everything up a little bit. Number four, the inchworm. So come on over here. I don't think I have anything that has that many. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, okay, we'll get six over there. So we, I'm gonna come down here and grab six of them. Where you inchworm, you loosen as you go down. So much harder from this angle. And then adjust inchworm back and forth until you hit it in the right spot there. And number five, adjust and straighten up right after you place them until you move on to the next one. All right, guys, those are my five tips along with a couple extra in there. If you go and write those down, you'll remember them. I don't remember them off the top of my head right now, but mostly it is those five tips. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. If you do go and try that, um, some of my tips, don't forget that it does take some, some practice to get them down. And, uh, but if you do them, I'd love to hear uh, if you could comment in the video or on another video that this helped you out. If you have tips yourself, I would absolutely love to know them because I, some of these I just kind of figured out by doing them myself, but some of them I did find out from other YouTubers and other, um, diamond painters that are viewers so you guys let me know if you have any more tips because i'd love to know also let me know i, I just you know i just want to have a conversation with you guys also let me know if you guys are well like if you guys enjoy doing rounds and if so what type of drill field do you guys like the loose type do you like the tighter kind do you use those metal tools that help you make sure everything's down straight. And um, yeah, are you multi-placers? Because maybe you guys are single placers wanting to multi-place or just curious about this video. Anyway, lots of stuff I'd like to hear from you about. So please do comment down below. Don't forget to like this video if you haven't already. It really helps me with the algorithm. And I know every YouTuber says that, but it's because it's true. YouTube has an algorithm and there's certain ways to make it work for you. So if you could like that video, much appreciated. Videos, these tutorials take a ton of editing and time. So it's very much appreciated when you guys show the love. And also don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. I'm sure that I do all things diamond painting. So if you love diamond painting, I'm sure that you'll love my channel. So, okay, thanks guys. I will see you guys next time. Bye.